Welcome back once again, Real People, Real Life, Wichita, Kansas, uh, America. America! Yay! You guys did so good. Um, I do want to uh, talk a little bit more on that human trafficking that we were just discussing. Yeah. Um, and, and I can't wait for you to uh, find out about those uh, city permits. Yeah. Did you know about that? I didn't. You wow. did not see, I, you know, but I did and I didn't. Don't. You yeah. heard about escort services and stuff back, you know, in the nineties and stuff. A lot. There yeah. were there were signs, there, there was were ads, but those laws are still in place. You those can places, st- you can still go downtown to the city of Wichita currently and buy a escort license, which I think is and ridiculous. a driver. Yes, I know. Well, it, it's and so, you mentioned the website that I don't even want to mention their name because people will go look it up. But yeah. When don't. I first found about that through Wichita SOS, I was shocked, mm-hmm. absolutely shocked. Mm-hmm. Th- there was a recent uh, big raid up in New York City, mm-hmm. and fifty percent of those that were, you know, snatched were up from. and grabbed, fifty percent were there in sex crimes, uh, and they were from Wichita. Yep. So how sad is that? Mm-hmm. Um, I want. I want to. You know, that's one of our many. You know, crime related issues. I've noticed something that can also be uh, uh, related to crime in different ways. I know you know a lot about this one. Brandon, I know you probably know a lot about this one, too. And that's the homeless situation that we have, you know, going on here in Wichita. I think it is increasing. Um, I know that when we went, Fossa and I went earlier this year to uh, a couple of different yep. places and sat down in the overflow shelter, um, you know, with all the cots on the floor. And, and uh, well, we learned a lot. We learned a lot. Um, interfaith ministries. Um, we, we learned a lot. I mean, I, I still, it's hard for people to understand that some people that are homeless prefer to keep it that way. I didn't understand that. I one, did. But. I did. Because the whole becoming involved in the system is scary. And you got to mm-hmm. give your ID and you got to, you know, it's a check in. And, and for some of them, they've been out of it so long, they don't know what their mm-hmm. status is. Mm-hmm. And they're scared enough that they will freeze. Right. And there's a few, a few of those, but I think the ones that were taking the choice of remaining homeless, even with their own children, uh, sadly, from what I think I, I got from some of those interviews, had to do with substance abuse. You know, whether it was drinking or... That was or, largely part of it, and, mm-hmm. and that's sad in itself. And and sometimes, well, sometimes so, that substance abuse is related to self-medication because of exactly. mental illness as well. So because exactly. mental illness, we, we have no help for the mentally ill. No. We are shoving them out the door and onto the streets. So. We have no, Well, the, you know, and sadly, uh, and you can t- talk about this any minute you want to chime in, Brandon. Uh, we, you know, we do have HOT, uh, a department of the Wichita uh, Police Department. And like you said, we've had uh, one of the officers on before on radio... Uh, with with you on the Friday mornings with uh, KQAM News Talk Radio, uh, and they do a fantastic job. I, I have you met anybody, any of the officers or not? So you do know. I yeah. kind of figured you did. Um, so, what do you think about what Hot is doing? What do you think uh, if you were there? What would you suggest to make? What do you? What's your take on on Hot on homeless and some of that stuff? I think they're doing a great job. I agree. Um, I've I've been a part of two presentations when they came and gave it and talked about the work they were doing and finding homes for homeless folks, getting them services, uh, finding food, and giving them skills. So I, I think it's great. Uh, mm-hmm. I'd love to see it expanded. I know that costs money, right? But you know, with an expanded effort, you can make more of an impact. Mm-hmm. What do you think of um, the problems that we do see on the streets, and not just on the streets, but you know, good grief, you walk into a convenience store to run in and, and grab an iced tea or bottle of water or pay for your gasoline, and, and you're, there's areas, and again, this is not specific to, a speci- I mean, this is citywide, believe me, uh, and you walk in and, and to the store, and you're almost having to step over people that are there with, not maybe not homeless or not, but you can tell there's an addiction issue. You can tell that it's it's the middle of the night, and they're walking the streets, and they just are a mess. What do you think of some of those addiction issues, and what do we do on that one? Um, my my answer is really simple. Voting matters. Um, there you go. We have elected people who don't see the importance of funding mental health. Absolutely correct. And we need to change that. Oh, well, uh, go ahead. Okay, so here's the other thing with that. There's a flip side to that. It's not always mental illness and self-medicating. Sometimes it's just the addiction and haven't been exposed to it, and once you are, I mean, it's debatable whether it's a disease or not, but it definitely changes every part of your being. And then these people are out on the streets, you know, their families won't let them come. You know, that meth is available somehow in an abundance because I'm seeing these people everywhere. What's going to happen with that? Well, I 
to so to expand mental health and health is important and we have elected officials who don't see the importance of it. Right. Well that's that's why the HOP program is so important as well as it's finding the way for those who are willing to and want to to get additional assistance and help. So it's it's not, you know, an extreme side here or an extreme side there. HOT's really trying to come together and do things that are appropriate. You're going to be serving a downtown part of the downtown district if you're elected. Mm-hmm. And I can take you to a, a lot of the homeless camps on the property of the arena. I can take you there right now. Mm-hmm. And one of the issues that we run into is that there are some agencies that are trying to prevent church groups from serving meals and providing assistance to the homeless. Uh, what do you think of groups that would do things mm-hmm. of that nature that are trying to prevent church groups? I mean, would you, do you see that as a benefit? Because I can name about seven or eight groups that have come um, under some difficulty. I've, I've heard process. a little bit about it, and I've heard some of the, I guess, complaint was that if you serve folks at a certain area, they'll continue to come back there to, to eat or get benefits. Mm-hmm. Um, I get that, but I personally would rather help someone. Okay. Uh, so. okay. I know one of the other issues that's come up in the past is health issues. And Officer Nathan, who heads up the POP program, they have never discovered a single incident of any kind of food disease or illness being passed on by providers in the community. Not one. That's good news. So, yeah, that's good news. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. You know, whether you're talking about the human trafficking or we're talking about the addiction that we see on the streets, uh, one more thing that we do see a lot on the streets around here this time of year, and it seems like it's really adding uh, and growing orange cones we have more construction going on in the streets around here i'll tell you what um what do you think of that wow i mean um, you know i'm i'm not a fan of how long it takes but right? you know as we're improving our infrastructure you know sometimes you Gotta have to make go. that sacrifice yeah. hopefully it's being built uh, in a way that will last a long time so we don't have to see those cones thank for you a while. thank you thank you but, yeah. does it does it seem like certain districts though get left behind I it, think it does to me at times. I just, bigger, bigger than the districts, neighborhoods are left behind. You know, yeah. we continue to improve these big main roads, but there are neighborhoods where roads haven't been uh, repaved in you know twenty, thirty years. So uh, there should be more of a focus on neighborhoods in general Thank and those you. back roads. And there's, we still even have dirt roads here in Wichita. Isn't that crazy? In different places, so yeah. Yeah. they're not graded or yeah. <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing. Yeah, can you imagine dirt. having to get home on one of them suckers in your car? Uh, and or the you sidewalks. just wash your car. <laughs> yeah. nice and Gosh yeah. darn it. Um, and, and the sidewalks. We've had um, a, a numerous amount of, of residents that are confined to wheelchairs. And you can't get down some of these sidewalks in a wheelchair without literally falling over in the chair, hurting yourself. It's not cool. Uh, what do you see about some of this infrastructure? What do you see? So the city makes the homeowner take care of the sidewalks. And it's really? And your responsibility. Mm-hmm. What? Um, really? Yeah. It's true. It, it, I mean, definitely, or if it's out so far, it's not yours. I mean, how does that work? That sidewalk. Is it on that side it, of that In front of your box? property is your responsibility. It's considered, a, pri- thought, it's considered a privilege to have the city put it there. I always <laughs> thought the it right was the dividing line yeah, yeah. of their responsibility. <laughs> Okay, no. so citizens, come on now. We need a good uh, concrete guy in here. I mean, I think that here. conversation should be had because, you know, there are some seniors on fixed income who Thank couldn't you. fix their sidewalks. So that's you have to get a permit conversation to fix it? needs to start. Uh, someone who has a, uh, a qualified license mm-hmm. is the one who has to do it. So you can't just go pour your own concrete. Right. I'm, I know how to mix concrete. So do I, but you can't do it. Um, not to make a sidewalk, anyway. Uh, so City that's Hall, thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> he just called us. <laughs> so I know those of the us that are a little upset about the sidewalks, and um, you know, I didn't even don't... know I was upset till you told me about. That. <laughs> well, now you are upset. So um, to go along I'm with supposed that, to fix that, and I have to hire someone. And yeah. Give... Uh-huh. To go along with that, though, I know last summer I think it was there was a big a big push to try and spend some more money at the city. When it came to bike paths mm-hmm. and bike lanes on the on the roads, mm-hmm. um, what's your thoughts on that one? Is that some is that an idea to try and expand more bike lanes? Um, should we? We have some that are. Fantastic. My opinion is is that bikes need to stay on the sidewalk with what? The no way. Oh my goodness! Because of the no. fact that motorized vehicles should stay on motorized roads, but I know that's an unpopular <laughs> right. view. So being from Colorado, you should know that. I was going to say, <laughs> right? I mean, from Colorado, we know better. Coming from Denver and coming from <laughs> Colorado Springs. 
it was a big issue that, that backed up a lot of traffic because they expanded the, the bike lanes and the roads so much mm -hmm. that you couldn't get into part you couldn't get into right. turning lanes, you had to wait for these, and it drove us nuts. And I don't want to see that here, but it's, what's your thoughts on it? Because I know I did get a lot of heat for that when I brought yeah, it. Yeah, I bet you did. I, uh, I support the bike lanes <laughs> and uh, healthy living. I think they should be protected exactly. bike lanes. You know, the bike lanes where it's just the street, uh, those are kind of dangerous because you have to, you know, visually look at where you should and shouldn't go, and people don't follow that. But if it's protected, it protects the biker and the uh, uh, person in the vehicle. But I think it's good to push Wichita in that, in that healthy way, and I know a lot of mill millennials around the nation support those. Um, I would like to see them protected. Though. I've seen homeless people get arrested or get a ticket for riding their bicycles on the sidewalk. So I don't know if that's the recommended choice of travel for a bicyclist <laughs> see, or not. That, well, you know, I'll just is that, is it? let's go here real quick because I know we're running out of time. But, I mean, if you have a business, for example, downtown, okay, and you don't have a whole lot of, you know, sidewalk out there, and sidewalk isn't good anyway, just so you know. Um, and is it the business owners? Oh, if somebody crashes their bike on that sidewalk, guess who's in trouble? If that's your responsibility, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, Sorry. I'm very upset about sidewalks. <laughs> okay, well, let's just look at it like this. Let's say you have a business downtown and, and folks are riding their bike on that sidewalk and, <clears throat> excuse me, you or a customer decides to walk out the door and you literally get run over by somebody on a bike. Not cool, right? Uh, okay, yeah, question. Up? If you have a business downtown, then is it that property owner's job to fix their sidewalks too? It's a good question. Haven't had that one asked. We need to figure Most that one out. Most of those were uh, just homeowner issues. Okay. Well, is it your we'll look into that. You know, look David into that. Cro I want you to come back. Amy, I'm not done with you if you want to hang. I mean, you know, yeah. we if we as citizens here. have to pay for it, those businesses should as well. Does that mean that sidewalk's yours? Because if it does, then it's insured. And if they get injured, this is serious. That's your responsibility. They're going to be filing a claim. Do you, on. do you know that in Delano, I think it was less than probably a year ago, I can't remember exact dates, but uh, there was, you know, some great folks, just good family people. They love to ride their bikes. I think I believe it was a husband and wife. Thank God the, uh, the child was not injured. They were riding down in Delano, and there's a lot of bike riding down in Delano. There's a lot in, in different areas, um, you know, but uh, I, I think it was the husband that pulled out and was hit, boom, right there by a car. And a lot of people in that area felt like had there been a better bike, bike lane, lane access opportunity, it, wouldn't have, it would have helped. You know, I'm not going to say that we need bike lanes, especially on Kellogg or anything like no. that. You know, exactly. but I think that it does help in certain areas around town when you when you know it's a residential area, for example. You know, and even downtown's getting more residential. Yeah, I think it's a cool place to, to ride a bike. I think going down on the river is fantastic the, to ride. Well, a bike. you're right. The only question I have, and I know, being the devil's advocate on this, I know, one, go ahead. I know, but uh, it's the money that it would take to expand a lot of those bike lanes. When we get such limited time during the year to actually use it, is it worth that type of investment when we're in winter six months out of the year, when it's raining and storming half the time? People can't. Now, when it comes to parks and stuff, absolutely, riding right. the bikes and everything. Mm -hmm. My question is just, you know, on the on the lanes, going right. driving in the road, yeah. driving downtown, whatever the case question. is, does it obstruct traffic, and is it worth the investment when we can only use it for such a finite time? That's the concern I have about it. Okay, that. and that makes sense. That makes total sense. So the question back would be, would you would you rather be safe during the time you're using it or not? I say no. safe. I mean, you say there's a <laughs> limited time, but I feel like that's, I mean, are you cold? Are I, you too hot? Well, I know well, people I think that ride their bike 24-7 to get I, to work. I, yeah. I understand Andy's point I'm better. Not. It's a matter of balancing what revenues you do have. Exactly. Right. And yeah. there are limited exactly. resources that are available. Yeah. Ready compared to, say, an investment in mass transit. Correct. Correct. That, that yeah. Might, exactly. might yeah, but that doesn't good. promote a healthy lifestyle, whereas biking does. And I feel like we really need to start promoting more healthy lifestyles around here. Amy would agree with that one. Well. Studio 54 Pilates. <laughs> Studio 54 Pilates <laughs> and hit, more. And tear around on one of those sidewalks and hit one of those big old things. And file a big claim. And fall over and wreck. I've seen nobody gets hurt doing Pilates. <laughs> yes, go and talk to Amy. I'm you won't saying. get injured. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I know we got to wrap this up, guys, but Brandon, thank you for running for Good office. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Excited and, for and, you. And I'm so, can you come back? Yeah before Just all this yeah. and then will you please uh get active and calling his radio show yeah. we'll get you and on the show absolutely okay. let's let's find out what brandon has to say <laughs> there we go there's an opening here. this friday we'll, we'll get you on the bike and we'll get you on the bike <laughs> yeah. we'll get you on the bike right. 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 we're gonna be right back you guys we'll be right back in the world do you bite kansas love you